Hello once again out there to all my fellow Fix-It employees to another episode of How to Satisfactory. My on-the-job training video for all the new employees out there to Fix-It Corp to teach you what you need to know. A how-to tutorial and walkthrough from landing on your designated planet to building a grandiose, working, efficient factory from the ground up that will assist you in becoming a valued employee of the company. And in the last episode, we were actually going to work on that efficient section, except, um, well, we kind of realized that we hadn't done all the concrete yet, so that's what we did in the last episode. So, this time around, we're actually going to do the efficient part. So, this will be the first of two to three episodes to achieve our efficiency goal. The idea here being we want to make all of our machines work in harmony together and produce just as many parts as we actually need with only a few left over to go into our storage or down here into our sink. The main thing is we want to try and start out at the top up here first by getting our newest machines up here, the one making the parts for our space elevator. We want to get that kind of going a little better. So today's episode is going to be concentrating over here on our steel section. We want to make sure that we are getting enough raw material coming in to produce the ingots and enough ingots being produced to produce the other parts, which will then be provided up to these machines up here because those are currently the only ones that need them. The next episode, we will come over here to the copper line and make sure this is all working efficiently because we are running a shortage right now of wire and cable up to our machines up top. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we'll do is come over to our hub, go ahead and log into the terminal here, and we're going to go to Tier 4 and Logistics Mark 3. So what this is going to give us is power storage. These work as giant batteries to store power. In case we have an outage or anything, you can actually build these and it will, you know, any extra power you have will go into this until they're full. And if you have a power outage, it will drain from these first. They work pretty much just as giant batteries would. Uh, the next thing it unlocks is the industrial storage containers. These are just like the regular storage containers we already have, but they are double the size, so they hold more. It's also going to unlock the most important thing that we are going to need, which is conveyor belt mark three and conveyor lift mark threes. Now these will actually transport up to 270 resources per minute. That's, that's quite a bit of resources per minute. You're also going to unlock these stackable pipeline supports as well. So those are kind of handy for working with pipes, but nothing we're gonna need right now at the moment. Go ahead and select that milestone. Now I already have all the parts I need to finish this milestone already loaded up here in my inventory. What you will need is 200 steel beams, a hundred steel pipes and about 500 concrete. Now, if you don't already have this, just check your storage containers. You should have plenty of this on hand at this point. And then just go ahead and launch it all into the transport box, push that big red button, and that's going to send that up to our alien overlords in the sky. Oh, oops, uh, I meant it's going to send it up to Fix-It Corp. Yes, that's, that's, that's totally what I meant. All right, so after you've unlocked Logistics Mark III, the next thing we're going to need is about seven to eight power shards. Now, two we can actually reuse from the two miners that we already have out here on this iron for our steel. Uh, if you've been following along, you should also have at least one power shard in each of these, as you can see here, and the other one should have one as well. So that's two of the seven to eight. So all we need now is about, we'll, we'll say about six more. Now the first part of this video is going to be showing you where you can find those six power shards at. So if you already have six power shards in your inventory or you don't need to look for those, you can completely avoid this next part and go on to the next section. But if you need help finding some, well, let's get to it. First one is going to be right over here on the side of this rock arch right there. You can kind of see it from here right there. So let's head over there. We'll just go ahead and build some ramps up to that to make that easy to get up there. Put it right there, and maybe turn Zoop on. that make this a lot easier. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and get out my Nobulus because there are some Chipotle plants up here. All right, so let's go ahead and take these guys out. There's one. Two. And there should be another one right over here. All right, so our first blue slug is going to be right up there on that outcropping. So we can kind of probably jump from these little things right here to get up to him fairly easy now that we're up here yeah just kind of make your way jumping up to here and we can just grab him right here on the corner there we go 
All right, so there is also a purple slug on the very, very top of this arch. So if you haven't already unlocked that in the MAM, what you can do is just make yourself a makeshift ramp up to the very top of here using the foundations and go ahead and grab that up there. Now the way I'm going to get up there is actually using some ladders. I think that will probably be the best way. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a foundation. I'm going to put it right here on that rock outcropping there. I'm going to zoop that over about three foundations go into my build menu, grab a ladder under architecture, and then I'm just going to attach it to the side of that, and then just kind of bring that down. Just build myself another foundation right here at the bottom of the ladder, as far as I can see, and then I should just be able to jump to the ladder, and then just make my way up it. All right, once I'm up here at the top, I can see I'm gonna have to use a couple more ramps here, so not a problem. I'll just put one right here, and then zoop that one up. That should give me enough space to get up there. And of course, whatever way you get up here is fine, as long as you get up here. And then we can go over here, and like I said, right in the middle is a purple power slug. Now, I actually have not unlocked this myself, so we're going to use this first purple slug to do that later on. After you grab the slug, just make your way back down the ladder, or however which way you got up there. And don't forget to demolish everything that you built so you get all your parts back. Also, don't forget, when you're searching for slugs, using the handy dandy hand scanner, is going to make things a whole lot easier. Just hit right click on your mouse to change between the different items that you're going to be searching for. Choose power slugs there and then as we're close to one it should start beeping. So according to this there's another one here somewhere. Alright so I think I know where this one is. It is down here in this giant chasm so we're not going to worry about that one right now. We'll just move on. So our next power slug is going to be right over here. So if you're facing the rock arch and the space elevator like so, it's going to be right over to the left on top of that pillar right there. So all we have to do is get on top of that. Again, if we just use our ramp and zoop, that should be no challenge at all. Once we're up here, we're going to go ahead and grab some nobelisks. And we're just going to blow away these rocks. There's our yellow slug, and the yellow power slug counts as two power shards. So, all together so far, not counting the purple one, that'd be a total of three power shards we can already make now. Alright, after grabbing the yellow slug on top of that, underneath the rocks, we're going to come over here to where our miner for our iron is, and if we turn around and look right up on that little rock outcropping right there, you should see it right on the tippy tip edge right there. And again, this one shouldn't be anything that's too hard to get. We'll just use zoop and then climb up to the top of this rock and then grab it. After grabbing that one, we're gonna turn around and there's gonna be another one that is right over there on the top of those rocks where we built our explosives plant over there. So we'll have to get back up to the top of that again. Now for me, I already had a ladder that went to the top of this. Hopefully you did as well. All right, so from the top of our explosives plant over here, where our coal miner right here is, if we turn kind of north, east right in there and then head that way you should see it right on the corner right there it is so we'll just walk right over to this one and grab that one all right so now at this point we should have collected one yellow slug and three blue ones that's a total of five power shards we're at now now if you turn around you'll notice your hand scanner is going to be going crazy telling you that there's another slug nearby those are actually in a cave deep underground right near here and i wouldn't recommend trying to get in there at the moment without a gas mask which we don't have also, if the gas isn't much of a deterrent for you, there's also a bunch of spiders down there. So, might not be the best time to go cave exploring. Alright, now from our explosives plant, we are going to travel west along the edge down through here, back past our miner here for our iron, and just keep going this direction. Now, as you are traveling west along the edge, you will come across this right here. It's a giant kind of rock outcropping with a bunch of these uh the gas rocks on top of it and be careful there is a pack of chargers over here so make sure you take care of the local wildlife first and of course pick up their remains because that has a new use now with update 7. now if you look around the edge of the rocks right here with the gas rocks you should see a yellow slug right there on the very edge of that once again just use your ramps to build something right down to that to get to that easy enough Run up here, grab this thing as fast as you can because you are going to be taking damage from it and then get back down quickly. And voila, one yellow slug equals two more shards. Now we have a total of seven. 
continuing west along the cliffside, you're going to come across two iron ore nodes down here. One here, and then one right over here. And we should be facing our coal miner right over there, as you can see in the distance. And you'll notice the hand scanner is telling me there's one nearby. It is actually, if we look straight down, and be careful not to fall off right here, because that's a long way down. There's a power slug right there. It's also being guarded by one of the spitters down there as well. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe there's also some arachnids down there as well. So you want to be careful. Now, best thing to do is to kind of plan your way on how you're going to get over to that and down to it or however you're going to go. Now, what I'm going to do is, of course, make myself some ramps down here. And I know there's going to be a fight down here because there's definitely spiders down here. I can hear them creepy crawling around. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure my weapon's out and prepare for that fight. Alright, so once we take care of all the problems down here, go ahead and make sure you pick up all your remains once again. Head over here and let's get that slug. Alright, once you've retrieved the power slug down here, you can go ahead and make your way back up how you came. Or you can kind of go through this cave a little bit and it actually comes out over here too. I'm just going to delete my stuff here I've built and I will show you. Alright, there we go. So let's go through the cave. I've already cleared out the cave from any of the uh, insectoids down through here. And if we just travel through here, kind of off to the left... It's going to come out right over here, right where our coal line is. Actually, that's a perfect coincidence, too, because what we're going to do is head right over here to this coal miner. We're going to pop down a craft bench, and we're going to go ahead and make all of those slugs into our power shards now. Okay, so I already had one power shard on me, so after making all of those slugs into the shards, I have a total of nine. One more than what I actually say we will probably need. Let's go ahead and next we want to make some encased industrial beams. You're going to need at least 10 of these right now. All right, after making those, what we're going to do is just select the miner mark 1 to make a copy of it. Hit E to change it over to a mark 2 and change that into a mark 2 miner. All right, so a mark 2 miner is going to give us about 240 coal per minute off of a pure node. That's actually quite good. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and make sure we change all of these lines into Mark III belts and Mark III lifts. So just convert those over, and then we need to get the one up on top there too, so not a problem. Let's go ahead and delete that craft bench though. Make our way up to our transport hub, and we want to make sure we transfer all of these over to a Mark III as well. Want to make sure you come all the way back to the lift and make sure the complete belt is a Mark III. Now the reason we're converting all of this is because we want to make sure we get as much coal as we possibly can, as fast as we possibly can, into that transport hub for that little tractor to carry. Because once we start messing with the machines over there, we're going to need a lot more coal. Once you finish all of your upgrades, now it's time to head back over to our main factory. Alright, once back over here at our main factory, we are going to need to make two more Mark II miners. So, go into our build menu, select that, go ahead and click that plus sign twice. That way we have a to-do list over here. And that's going to show us exactly what we're going to need in order to produce all of that and what we're missing. Alright, so make sure you grab or make all the parts you need in order to complete that to-do list. For me, I'm going to need some more encased industrial beams. And we are going to need at least a couple more portable miners. So I'll go ahead and make those industrial beams real quick here. Then I'll head down here to the workshop, make a couple of portable miners. And last but not least, we are also going to need a ton of steel beams. So let's go up here to our storage. And we should have a bunch of these up here somewhere. I believe it's in this container. Nope, that's pipe, so it's the one next to it. Here we go. All right, I'm just going to grab a ton of these. I'm going to grab like five stacks. Once you've got everything you need, let's go ahead and come out here to our two iron miners. Let's go ahead and we're going to just remove these actually because I don't know about you guys, but I suddenly have giant iron ore rocks that just appeared inside of my miners. So let's get these out of the way. Once you've got those out of the way, go ahead and replace the Mark II miners down now in those spots. Connect each of the miners with a little bit of power here, like so. There we go. And then remove and replace the belts using Mark III's just like that there we go now what we want to do is go ahead and make sure the rest of these belts are mark three as well going into the building once inside go ahead and copy the foundry and place another one right next to it like this one and same thing over here on the other side as well we then want to take a splitter and connect it right here behind this first foundry right here on this iron line there we go, just like that. What we're going to do essentially is split this iron line so that we can run it into this one and that one over there as well. 
And just remember to use Mark III belts to make sure that's connected into each section here. Now make sure our new foundry over here is also connected. Just like this. Come over here to the other side, do the exact same thing. We're going to remove these belts right here. We're going to go ahead and grab a splitter. Making sure it's right here in front of that, just like that. Move that conveyor pole right there too, so that's not in the way. Make sure we got Mark III belts going in, like so, and over here as well. And connect. After getting all the iron connected, we're next going to just go ahead and remove the conveyor list we have here coming into these first two foundries. I obviously use conveyor holes here, so make sure you remove the belts and everything. Go ahead and copy these conveyor holes. We want to try to get those about in line here, so right there. Put another one over here on this side, right there. Now we want to go ahead and use Mark III lifts right here, making sure it is inputting into the foundry. And we'll just connect these to all the different floor holes, just like that. And then make sure to connect those up using Mark III belts as well. Since we're going to be using Mark III belts from this point forward, the best thing to do is just open up your build menu, find the Mark III belt under logistics right there, then just add it to your hotbar by pressing the number you want it to be. For me, it's going to be number three, so I'll just highlight it and hit three. Now my hotbar number three number is always going to be the Mark III. That's going to make this a lot easier because I personally kept forgetting to change it over to a three. There we go. Going to finish all of those off. Now let's go underneath of this down here. We're going to add the lifts down here on the bottom the same way we had them before. Make sure you also convert the old conveyor lifts down here over to Mark III as well. Now all the splitters and everything we had set up down here, just go ahead and remove those and the belt. Let's go ahead and convert this belt into a Mark III coming out of the transport hub like so. Next bring your conveyor lift down from our two new conveyor lifts right there and there. And then we're going to set up all new splitters down here. Kind of put it right on the line if you can there. You should be able to now take a Mark III lift and put it, or belt anyway, and put it right into that lift just like that. So you just have to add enough space so that it will kind of lift up to that because they are kind of at an odd angle. Once you've got this splitter and conveyor lift set up, we're going to go ahead and copy that splitter. We're going to come down here to this first one like that. And then skip the one in the middle, come down here to the next one right here. Make sure that's in line and the next one down here. Then we're going to add all of our lines in. So just hop over here, conveyor belt, mark three, into that, into that, into that, from there into that, come down here, into there, into there. Now, once you've got all of these in, the middle one will be the next one we put in. We saved it for last because if you don't, you can't really get the lines to connect. So we got to take one of these splitters, kind of put it right here in the middle and just kind of line it up to about, yeah, kind of eyeball it right there, right on the line, then connect it. Because if you do it any other way, it just won't work. All right, so next up is power. I'm not a huge fan of how I have these lines around right here. So I'm just going to get rid of these actually, just get rid of the lines. And get rid of these poles right here at this door too. I don't think we need those either. So I'm just going to get rid of those. And instead, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and put a pole down kind of right in front of each of these. Like one there. And then just kind of maybe one there. Let's connect those up real quick and see how that's going to work. And then run that over to here. Run that to there. Yeah. Okay. All right. I come over here to the other two, we'll do the same thing. Run that power line to that, run that over to the edge over here, which technically should just be a wall, but eh, I'm okay with that. I'll just delete that cable, run that to here, and from that over to that one. Something else I could probably do, and I might do it later on, is maybe just use the, uh, the double wall outlets and then just put the actual cable on the other side of the wall instead of hanging out like on this wall like it is. Now we also have to make sure that these lines are connected to a main outlet so what I'm going to do is just grab that real quick and we're just going to run it down through the line right here make sure it's on orange and then we can just kind of post it wherever we want I like there and then run a cable from that over to this pole. There we go everything's activated again make sure our two new foundries are selected for steel ingot and do make sure to select both of them all right, and now that those foundries are set, we got them all set for steel ingot. We can make, let's see here, 45 in each one. Next, let's come out to the front of each of these foundries. And we're just gonna remove 
these conveyor belts all together. And we're going to do that on both sides as well. Don't forget your conveyor poles either. Right, now what I want to do here is add a merger in here. So we'll make sure everything is a merger. There we go. I like that. Make sure the outlet is going down towards these machines down this way. Line it up just right. There we go. Put another one down here in front of this one. Make sure the outlet is going towards this merger down here, like so. And we're gonna put another one right in front of that one, like that. Make it again, making sure it's all running down the line. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run three of these foundries just to make steel beams, because beams require a lot of ingots. Pipes, not so much. Now we got all three of our mergers on each of these foundries right here. We can start putting in our Mark III conveyor belts, connecting those up, then connecting that like that, and this into this. Then we want to convert the existing belts on these two machines over to that as well. Make sure to also get the ones in between the splitter and the machine as well, like that. Now we're coming over here to our other foundry. Let's just go ahead and grab a merger here as well. Put that right in front of that, like that, with the output going this way. We should be able to make that an easy turn right into this splitter, and then connect that up like that. All right, so now only this foundry will be running this side, because as I said, it takes a lot less ingots to make pipes than it does to make steel beams. All right, so let's look at our steel beams right now for a second. Let's hit E to configure these. All right, currently I have it set to 25% underclocking. That's 3.75 steel beams per minute. That's not a lot, but however, you see how many steel ingots it takes just to make almost four of these? It takes 15. So what we can now do is we'll kind of jump this up a little bit. Let's say I want to make a full 100%. That's 15 per minute. That's going to require 60 steel ingots every minute. That's, that's a lot of steel ingots to make the full 100%, like a lot. So the main question here is exactly how many steel beams do we require in order to make the parts on the top floor? Also, this is a great opportunity to make a way to get to the top floor even easier. So one thought that I have is let's go ahead and take out this railing right here. Let's go ahead and grab one of these catwalk stairs, put that up like that, and then we'll take the straight pieces and I'm just going to run these along down through here. Make sure I zoop these down through there like that. All the way down through here. And then we come down here and I want to say this is maybe a good place to take out a wall. Oh, yeah, that actually works. All right. So let's take out this one here. And let's make this the catwalk corner and turn it towards that like that. Yeah. All right. And then we can just put like a wall door up here or something. But that's for later. Let's just move on to this. All right. So. Our one that needs the steel beams is our middle machine here, our middle assembler. So let's take a look at this. It's making versatile frameworks. It's currently we're making five versatile frameworks a minute, and we're requiring 30 beams a minute in order to do that. Well, we don't really need five of these per minute, and that's a lot of steel beams. It may not seem like a lot, but it is because you have to think this is also happening on the other side as well. So what's the minimum we could get away with? What if we set this to 50%? Which by the way, something new that I really, really love, if you look close here, it will now tell you what it's going to be before it actually finishes making the next one. Previously, what it would do is it wouldn't tell you what the new results are gonna be until after it finishes the next piece, and then these would change. Now, you can see what that change is gonna be in parentheses. It's a nice little addition that they did in update seven. So we can see here that now we're going to be making 2.5 per minute on this side. And that's only require 15 beams per minute. So if we double that, we have the 15 on this side that we are going to require. And then we come over here, we change this one to 50% as well. Come over here, change this to 50% clock speed. That is going to be 15 over here. All right, there. You know what? That's 30. 30 steel beams. That's all we need in order to make, plus a few extra. Whatever extra we make after the 30 will go into storage. And we could use them for storage because we have to like, you know, fix all of these. The Mark III belts require steel beams. So we're gonna need some of those too. But we require at least 30. So let's head back down to our steel assemblers. All right, so I've got three constructors on each side. 
This side's making the steel pipes, so not a concern right now at the moment. But that side over there is making the beams. So we have three constructors. Now we need to make at least 30. So that's definitely going to be at least 10 per machine in order to make 30. All right, so let's like take a look here. If we know that we need to make 10 in every machine, we'll come down here. We'll change that to 10. All right, 10 per minute is 66.667%. Okay, uh, that's gonna make that's gonna require 40 steel ingots a minute. That's that's a lot. All right, so 40 in that one, 40 in that one, and 40 in that one. That's uh, 40 and 40 is 80. That that's 120 right there. 120 ingots just to make enough steel beams to cover that. We're gonna need a little bit more. All right, so what if we say 12.5 per minute? 83.3333% is 50 ingots a minute. All right, if we do that, I'm gonna copy these settings real quick. So if we put that in each of these machines, that's 150 ingots that we are going to need. And with three foundries, that's doable. So let's come over to our foundries now. We know we have three foundries and three constructors. Well, if we put 50 into each one of these, then each of these foundries would need to produce 50. So let's put a power shard into this first one, and let's tell it we want to make 50. All right. There we go, 111.11111%. All right, that's fine. That's going to require 50 ore and 50 coal. All right, that's, that's all doable. Let's go ahead and copy that setting right there and put this into each of these foundries. Drop a shard in, hit paste. Come down here to the third one, drop a shard in, and hit paste. All right, there we go. So each of these is overclocked now, just a tiny little fraction of a bit, but they're each producing 50 ingots, and we are now producing 12.5 per minute in the steel beams. So if we bring up our in-game calculator, and we take 12.5, and we multiply that by three, that is a total of 37.5. We know we need 30 for the two machines up top, so that leaves us 7.5 left that is going to go into storage per minute. Not a whole lot at all. You could probably even get away with not even using a power shard in the three foundries, honestly. That would give you, let's see here, uh, you would need 45 a minute. All right, so that would mean if you don't overclock the foundries to make 50 per minute, you would have to set this to 11.25 per minute. You would only get, let's see, 1.25 per minute extra over what you would need for the machines. That's not a lot. So I, I still recommend going ahead and actually just overclocking these. Even though you're not overclocking them a lot, still, that's something. So you're probably thinking, well, since we went ahead and put the shards into these, why are we not just making more beams? That way we have a lot more going into storage. So the reason for that is actually the material that we're setting forth through here. Sure, we could probably overclock these two right here, the two miners out here to get the iron to go through it. But remember, we had to have 50 coal for each of these machines as well. That's 150 coal. I mean, it's doable, but all of that coal is being transported from the other place over there. And we only have like 240 a minute going into the transport hubs. So we have to keep all this up down here. It, it can be a bit rough. I've tested this and I think this is the best way to go. I'll keep testing it though. So if anything changes in the future, I will let you know. And that way you can like up how much we're actually producing here. But let's head over here to our miners because we got to up these guys too. All right, so now let's head over to our miners. We know we need on this one line, which is handling two of the foundries, we know we need 50 per foundry, so that's 100. We need 100 per minute of iron coming out right here. So we'll drop a shard in there. Let's overclock that all the way. That's only 90. All right, so we're going to need another shard over here. All right, now let's uh, up this to 100. So we'll just type that in. We need 100. There we go. 1.166.6667% for 100 parts per minute works for me. Let's come down here. Let's do the same thing over here. Put two in and do 100 parts per minute. All right, so now we got both of these miners set to 100 per minute in iron coming in. All right, and that's going to go. We've got 100 going into these two. We've got 50 going into this one, and we've got 50 going into this one. So we could overclock this right here as well. 
to make 50 as well. So we can take another shard. Let's just go ahead and do that. Let's just make this at 52. So there we go. That's going to use all of that. All right, so next up is our steel pipes, and then we can actually finish up with this episode. So we have three constructors making steel pipes running off of one foundry, which is 60, or no, 50. 50 ingots it's producing, so 50 ingots divided by three. All right, and let's bring up our in-game calculator. All right, 50 divided by three is 16.666. Ah, okay, whatever, it's a 16.67. 16.67, we'll round up. All right, so let's go in here. We need the input right here to be 16.66, not here. If you type it in here, that's going to be how many of these are made. And you can see that's going to be 25 ingots, which is 75 ingots total. So that's not, not going to be enough. We need to get this down to uh, lower. All right, so here's what I figured out. If we tell the machine to make 11 steel pipes per minute, that is 16.5 steel ingots per minute. That's as close as I can get it without going over or just under. So yeah, that works for me. All right, so let's go ahead and copy the settings for the steel pipes, and then we'll put them into the other steel pipe machines here. So just paste and paste. There we go. So like I said, the reason I didn't want to overclock those machines up there, the foundries, too much is because we don't want to run out of coal. That truck can only transport so many. I figured it to be somewhere around 340 to 345 in every load is all it's bringing over. And if I try to overclock it more, I ended up uh, kind of messing this up where we would run out of coal and then the truck just wasn't keeping up. So we would have blank spots where there was no coal going through which would cause the efficiency to go down. And we could probably up it a little bit more, but yeah, I tried a few different things and it just really wasn't working. So I recommend you going this for just this route for the time being until I figure out the exact amount. And then I'll probably let you guys know that in the next video. All right, now while we're down here with the trucks, let's go ahead over here to where all of this is getting kind of mixed around over here, right up in here. So what we want to do here is this is splitting these up and it's sending more than it should over here to go into storage what we want to do is we only want to send the extra over there to it the what what we're not actually using all right so what we'll do is we'll remove that splitter in these lines right here let's go ahead and put a smart splitter in here let's see we want the input kind of coming that way yeah just like that all right coming out of there all right, let's make sure we plug that into a conveyor belt there, like that. Let's put that, connect that back over here, connect that back up to that. There we go. Oh, and as you can see, all of our steel beams are now going that way. Well, we don't want that to do that. So we want to go in here, we want the center output to be overflow. And the output on the right will be steel beams. There we go. Now, effectively what we just did is we cut off anything except whatever is extra. So all of the ones that are going to be needed are now going to be going this way. And if it gets backed up, it will send the extra down there to go into storage. Now we want to do the same thing with that splitter right there. And the safest place to do so is by standing in front of or on top of the smart splitter we just placed. So what we'll do is we'll take that one. We'll take that out. Go ahead and delete the lines right there and there. Yeah, that works. Okay, go ahead and copy this smart splitter. Make sure the input's coming out of that one right there. Line it up just perfect. And then connect our lines back. So there we go, and that goes to that. And then we come down here, we can connect that into that one. There we go. All right, and all done. And of course, just go ahead and upgrade the rest of the lines down through here. There we go. Get all of that into those inputs down there. Now we need to program that splitter, so the safe place to do it is you can kind of scoot right in between these two right here. You can get a little bit closer and just make sure you're not getting hurt by the gas. And then configure. Alright, so this one, the right hand, is going to be overflow. The middle will be none. And the left will be steel pipes. There we go. Alright, so make sure that's working. Yeah, there goes the steel pipes. So we'll send as many pipes as needed that way and any extra pipes are going to go over there to go in the storage. Alright, so we're done on that lower level. Let's go all the way back here to the very, very top. 
head all the way over here to the very first machine which is making stators and requires pipes let's make sure this is good all right so we need 15 per minute on this side 15 per minute on that side down there that's let's see we're making 11 per minute in each machine we're making a total of 33 only three pipes are going to be going into storage that's not that great let's go ahead and get this down specifically since it's requiring so much wire as well if we take this down to let's say 50 percent all right that's going to make two and a half stators per minute how many stators do we actually need this machine here i think requires stators right yeah we need two and a half per minute okay well we don't really need stators for a whole lot of stuff so let's go down here we can minimize this uh let's see um, two and a half per minute. If it needs two and a half, none are going to be left over. I'd like to send at least some. So what if we do, let's say four. Four per minute will require 12 steel pipes. That's 24. You know what? That works. We'll do an 80% underclock. Four stators per minute being made. Two and a half of those per minute will go into the machine that needs them. The rest will be storage. Go over here to the other side and set that for the same thing. 80% underclock. There we go. All right. It also requires less wire too, which is, you know, that's a great thing too. All right. So there we go. I feel like this is probably the most efficient that we can get this right now at the moment. I am going to mess around with the numbers with the coal a little bit more to see if we can't up the amount of steel beams being made because we also have to start making encased industrial beams as well. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing that in this factory or if we have a whole other factory that just does that. I don't know yet, um, but that's something I'll look into later on. But for the time being, this is, I think, the video. And But for the time being, I think this will do for now. And, and like I said, I'll keep looking into the numbers. I'll keep figuring out. I will let you know the best efficient for coal and how many steel beams and stuff to make and how many ingots to make and all that in the next video before we start on the copper line which again will be the next video and we're going to make sure that that is running as efficient as we could possibly make that because we have a shortage of wire and cable up here and we're not producing enough stuff fast enough with that shortage going on all right so that's going to do it for this episode of how to satisfactory hope again i have explained everything as detailed as i possibly could uh, i did it in a slow enough pace that it was easy enough to understand and hopefully you guys well pretty much just understood exactly what uh what we're trying to do here if you have any questions feel free to put those in the comments section if you have any suggestions i'm always up for hearing those as well i've actually gotten some decent suggestions for some people um and I'm going to try to take, you know, I always try to take a look and see if that is better than the way that I did as well. Um, and then we'll use those in maybe the, the next version of the How to Satisfactory series once the actual release comes out of the game. We're still in early access for now though, so I'm going to keep continuing this particular series. I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons. It was thanks to your contributions that I am able to continue to do videos. Also, just for the regular viewer out there, you you watching the videos and stuff, it definitely helps out the channel. Make sure you give it a huge thumbs up. That tells YouTube that to suggest it to other people. That way other people will find the series and, and my channel and hopefully subscribe as well. And speaking of subscribing, if you haven't already, make sure you click that button. Love to see new people here on the channel. All right, so wherever you guys are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and I'll see you in the next episode.